Hey, welcome back to Laser Engraving 911. So with all the amazing CO2 laser engraving machines coming onto the market today and becoming more affordable, you've probably begun to notice that there is different laser source options in these CO2 laser engraving machines, specifically RF tubes or traditional glass laser tubes. Well, in today's video, I thought I'd break down the main differences between the two types of CO2 laser sources. So we can get to the bottom of it and you can make the right decision before your next purchase. We'll even talk to a real laser scientist to help us break down the amazing technology that goes into making a great RF laser tube. So if that sounds like something you wanna get into, then buckle up, get your pen and paper out, cause we're about to get into it on Laser Engraving 911. All right, first let's look at how a CO2 glass laser tube works. So these are basically like old school light bulbs. You've got high voltage that's applied to a gas filled tube. Then the energy inside that tube bounces back and forth rapidly between two mirrors until it reaches its full potential. And then that final beam is shot out the business end. Glass CO2 laser tubes are affordable. They're powerful. However, they can be fragile, not have the same lifespan as an RF tube, and they do require water cooling. All right, next let's look at RF laser tubes. So RF laser tubes, think of them like high-tech LED lights, but instead of applying high voltage to these laser tubes, they use radio frequencies to excite the gases inside of a metal box, which allows them to have a much sharper and finer beam. They allow the machine machine to run a lot faster and it's perfect for high precision engraving and engraving really, really fast. Plus, they last a lot longer and they don't require water cooling. But before we get into the pros and cons of RF tubes versus glass tubes, let's head over and talk to Jeff Broderick over at Epilogue Lasers headquarters and have him break down some of the amazing technology that goes into making one of these high precision RF tubes. So roll the tape. So this is a 120 watt RF tube right here. Uh, one of your actual production models. Yep, here. grabbed it right off the line. Can I pick it up? Yeah, absolutely. So RF power is delivered through the tube wall, which is another aluminum housing, through this feed through, which connects to the electrodes here. So what happens is we put the RF energy in this and it's at 100 megahertz, which is a AC frequency. So what happens is the field goes back and forth like this at 100 million times a second. Okay. And that creates what they call a discharge. So you know, like the old fluorescent tubes? Yeah. You know, you see the glow of gas in there? Right. Same sort of thing Okay. in this. And the same sort of thing in the glass tube. It's just different. It's a different approach in how we light it. And that's where the discharge comes out? Yeah, so this is actually spaced up like that. Oh, okay. Got it. Right inside there is where the discharge happens. This is live. This is ground. Got it. So the field is going like this mm -hmm. and then the discharge lights. Now on this, on the outside of the tube, we have two meters, mm -hmm. which reflect the light back and forth. Yep. And then one edge of one mirror lets some light out. This technology is called unstable resonator and allows you to build high power in a small package. Got it. And so it's kind of reflecting back off of itself. And every time mm -hmm. it's doing that, is it, it kind of exciting it or? Yeah, so every pass through the cavity, it picks up a little more power, right? Until it gets to the end and then it leaks out at 120 watts. So this laser is pretty much all one direction. It starts in the middle and it's called unstable because the beam continually walks from the center of the bore on either side until it exits. Uh, well, this has been a great explanation. You've definitely educated me. Thanks again, Jeff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that was really cool. And. Um, uh, with that, I think we're gonna wrap it up. All right, so let's get into the pros and cons of the RF tube. First, we'll talk about the pros. Number one pro, superior beam quality when it comes to RF tubes for highly, highly detailed precision engraving. Number two pro is longer lifespan. So RF tubes can last up to 10,000 hours plus. I have two RF laser tubes in my epilogues here in the shop. I've owned one of them for three years and I've owned the other one for eight years and it's still rocking strong. 
And number three pro is it's got faster pulsing. So what does that mean for you? That means that you can run your jobs way faster than you can with a laser that has a glass tube. Now let's get into the cons. All right, the first con of the RF tube is that they are expensive. They're significantly more expensive than a glass tube. So the other con of an RF tube is that you've got lower power for the price. You're gonna spend a lot more money for a lot less wattage. So the last con for the RF tube is that they are much more expensive and complicated to repair as opposed to a glass tube, which if something goes wrong, you can just replace the glass tube at an affordable cost, where an RF tube requires a little bit more precision and probably more money to repair. All right, now let's talk about the pros and cons of the CO2 laser glass tube. So number one pro, they're way more affordable than RF tubes. Way lower upfront cost and great for any entry level machine. Number two pro is that you get high power for the price. So you get a lot more power per dollar spent when you're getting a CO2 glass tube. And the number three pro is that they are much easier to replace if things go south with the glass tube. You can just buy a brand new laser tube and put that in and you're back up and running for a very affordable cost. All right, and then of course we have to talk about the cons of the laser glass tubes. So the number one con of this type of tube is that it has a much shorter lifespan than an RF tube, typically between 1,000 to only 3,000 hours. So that's gonna require more frequent replacements. Number two con is that it has a lower beam quality and larger dot size, so it's not best for high precision fine detailed engraving. And the number three con for the glass tube is that it does require an additional water chiller and that can take up more space in your shop because if you don't have that, it will overheat and break. Okay, so before I get into my final recommendations on what type of laser source that I would recommend that you get in your next laser engraving machine, let me say this. If you've got a machine that's built well and it's got a glass tube or it's got an RF tube in it, you're going to be just fine. As long as all the other components are built well and it's from a reputable company, you're gonna be fine. But, and I say but, I've never been one to accept just fine. And that's why I will always choose an RF tube when at all possible. So if you're shopping around for your first CO2 laser or next CO2 laser, yes, you'll get lower wattage if you pick the RF option, but what you'll gain is precision, longevity, and speed. And in my opinion, those things are more important than wattage because in this business, Time is money. A great example at an entry-level CO2 laser is the Epilogue Maker line that comes in both 30 and 40 watt using an Epilogue made RF tube like the one we saw earlier in the video that Jeff was showing us. These machines are designed for ease of use, speed, and reliability. You already know that I'm a huge fan of Epilogue. I use them here in my shop, but the Maker line is their most affordable one yet. And most importantly, it comes with that awesome RF laser tube technology that we're talking about here today. If you're interested in the Maker line, I'll list a link in the description below so you can check out all the details. It's a really nice unit. It's like the little brother to the Epilogue Edge, but at half the cost. It's a really great unit for starting off, and I got a chance to see it just a few weeks ago and play around with it, and it really does live up to the hype. All right, well, that about wraps it up for this video. I hope you got value out of this video and it helps you make your decision when you're shopping around for your next CO2 laser and you have a better understanding of what is the main differences between a glass tube and an RF tube. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, 
hit that subscribe button and drop a comment on your thoughts on the RF tube versus glass tubes. I also wanted to say a special thank you to all my subscribers. I couldn't do this without you and I really appreciate your support. So with that, I'll see you around on Laser Engraving 911.